Welcome everybody to the Armor Report. It's Monday, the 18th of August. Thanks for being here with me. Hope you all had a good weekend. We are going to um, try to make this a little bit quicker. I always say that in these videos and I get a little long-winded. So let's try to keep this tight. Um, it's Monday morning. There's a lot of action going on. Don't forget this is a live trading desk. I have screens all around me. I'm actively managing my own capital and that of individual investors through our interactive brokers relationship. The Armour Report stands for Algorithmic Risk Management Research. Risk Management. So I spend a lot of time on these videos trying to share with you the information that we've developed using algorithms. Okay? We are in the investing age of AI. If you don't have AI backing up your risk management procedures, you will struggle. So what I've tried to do here is create a channel to help you out with that. Talk to me. No, no. Okay. All right, guys, like I said, live trading desk. Sometimes I get interrupted. Forgive me. Um, so what I'm doing here, you see, what when I first got into this business, and um, for many years I worked out of Wall Street, Manhattan, built up a fairly large business um, with my partners. We ran the largest equity business in the country for high net worth investors at some of the biggest wirehouses. And then I moved down here to Florida, set up my own shop, managed my own capital. Um, I could always go back to that old life. I could always um, start a hedge fund again and you know, build up. But the fact is, I like managing my own capital and I like sharing with you the information I've gathered over 30 plus years of doing this. I just enjoy it. That's why I'm here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the information on our trading desk today and let you know how we're trading. Now, last week, in the Week in Review on Friday, I talked about risk off again. I talked about short selling and, and discuss that a little bit. So we're going to update you on where we are in that process. It changes rapidly on our trading desk. And then I'm going to get into ways to beat this stock market this year, ways to take advantage of the weakness that we've been seeing to build a portfolio that can really produce for you over time. And I'm going to detail a couple of um, areas in the market where we're focusing our research time right now during this market volatility and whipsaw action. So it'll give you some food for thought, some places for you to focus your own research and your own homework. So you're ready to act when we have another risk on opportunity across the board that our algorithms share with us. All right, so let's get to it. Um, A quick review of Friday's report is important. We talked about how we've been risk off using our algorithms since August 5th. And there's been a lot of ridiculous sell-offs and ripping rallies since that period. And we've just been holding a big cash position. There's nothing wrong with that during the volatility while you wait for the next risk on opportunity. Last week, we put some short positions on some of the indexes. Please follow along on our website and on Twitter so you know when we're changing those positions, particularly short selling. We change them so fast, I can't even update fast enough on that website. It's best for you to try to subscribe to the Armour Report. It's a free service. Just go online, rosenthalcapital.com. You'll see it box pop up, subscribe to it. I try to update my subscribers as fast as I can. Um, on our website, we have the, um, the risk monitor for you telling us whether we're in a risk off or risk on position and then what our model portfolios look like at IB and whether or not we have short positions on or not. Now you would see last week that we exited those positions going into the weekend. Now, if that seems crazy to you because we talked about shorting during the week, look, let me be very clear. Short selling is not for everybody. I tried to explain this on Friday. There's nothing wrong with just holding cash 
while the hysteria unfolds and wait for your next long opportunity. I suggested then, and I'll suggest it again today and every day, short selling is for the very few and it's for the fast. Unless the Fed's in a process of raising interest rates and reducing money supply, short selling is a very dangerous idea. So on our trading desk, we'll step in every now and then. But we're quick. If we're not getting paid, if there are reversals in the market to the upside, we step out, we wait for another opportunity, or we continue to do, and we continue to do our research to get long the market. We'd rather be long here. Okay, this oh, right here, this bear sign right here, I'd rather take it down. I'd rather be long. And that might come down this week based on the action today. So what I said on Friday was the cavalry is coming in. When the market rips lower, this was only an 8% rip off of the highs. I don't know why cavalry would come running, but we saw it last week. We saw Trump talking positive about trade wars over the weekend, so the market jumps up 300 points on the Dow this morning. It's really a ridiculous short-term market. For the longer-term buy and holder, and you'll see this in our model portfolios, we did not disturb our dividend-paying assets in our portfolio. Go look at the website, RosenthalCapital.com. You'll see the allocation we have conservative, balanced, aggressive portfolios for dividend paying assets where we're collecting yield. That's what we're going to talk about today. That's at the top of our whiteboard today. So to wrap up the beginning of this discussion, our algorithms are still risk off, but they are now in a position to give us a solid risk on signal. It may even happen today. If it does, everybody who is subscribing to the Armour Report Action Alert will get an email tomorrow that we're risk on. And I'll talk about it on Wednesday at 1130 right here on this channel. I don't know if it's going to happen. I don't try to preempt our algorithms. We wait. We get a risk on opportunity. We put money to work. Um, why would it be a risk on opportunity? What are the fundamentals for it? See, for me, I've been building these algorithms really my whole life. And so when I get risk on, I just put money to work. I don't try to intellectualize and figure out why. Because most of the time, we don't know why. Because most of the time, fear and greed in the marketplace get you to talk you out of great positions and talk you into ridiculous positions. So I don't spend a lot of time sharing with you the fundamental reasons why something's happening. I use AI to tell me when to add risk, when to subtract risk. If it tells me to add risk at the end of today, I'm adding risk. Every time I do that, we have tight stops. If we don't get paid, we get out, go back to cash. I can't tell you what to do with your own portfolio. I don't know you. This is for education purposes to help you start incorporating AI into your investment process. Okay? Artificial intelligence is driving markets today. Over 90% of trades on all the exchanges are AI based. That's why I started this YouTube channel for you to share the AI that we've created for our own portfolios. But I'm going to share with you one piece of news that I read over the weekend that I thought was incredibly important. And if we get a risk on opportunity, it will explain why and it'll help your mind grasp it. So I said last week, here comes the cavalry. The market's selling off, people are in a panic mode. So Fed governors who are dovish come out and talk about how the Fed's going to be active in September, lowering rates. And the ECB comes out and says, you already knew we were going to add liquidity in September, but we're going to add even more. I can't believe they felt they needed to say that after an 8% decline off the highs, but okay. They got to run out there and say they're going to do even more in September. We have China coming out and 
the government is doing things to help create growth in their own country, adding to the money supply. So that's the Calvary. And then I read this incredible story over the weekend, guys. Holy smokes. It just crystallizes the thought. There is a Danish bank right now that is paying people to borrow money and buy a house. Think about how bizarre the market is right now. There are negative interest rates all around the world, all over Europe. But to really understand what that means, negative interest rates, negative interest rates, people have to pay the government of Germany to buy the 10 year yield, the 10 year note, 10 year bond, not 10 year bond. They have, they got to pay the government for those bonds, not the other way around. They're not getting yield. They're getting a negative yield, which is insane. Why would anybody do that? That would, that's designed to force people to go buy assets, to go invest in the economy because you would never just buy a government bond and pay them for the privilege. It's absurd. But it gets even stranger. If you're a Dane, or I guess anybody who has access to that market, you can borrow from this bank and go buy a house. And at the end of paying off the loan, you've paid less than you borrowed. I mean, we've fallen down a rabbit hole, guys. We've fallen down a rabbit hole. But that gets me to my whiteboard today. If we get a risk on signal, in our opinion, on our trading desk, and this is, you got to do homework and see if it fits your approach, but on our trading desk, buying stocks that pay a fat dividend has to be a no brainer. It has to be a no brainer in a world where a bank is paying people to buy borrow money and buy a house. Negative interest rates. All of a sudden, the top of our whiteboard has to be names like AT&T and Verizon and the pipeline stocks. You've heard me talk about it before. They've gotten destroyed in the sell-off. AMLP is the pipeline ETF. (laughs) <laughs> just a second. I just saw a story go across the tape. And I, I just got to tell you, it's crazy. President Trump now says the Federal Reserve should reduce interest rates by 100 basis points. Not a quarter, not a half, by 100 basis points. This is what I'm talking about when it comes to the cavalry coming in and trying to talk the market up and interest rates being negative around the world and going lower. In an environment like that, Blue chip companies that pay a dividend should be at the top of our leaderboard. Now, I'm just throwing out some names for you. I'm not telling you to go buy them. You have to do your own research. But here are some ideas. AT&T and Verizon, a blended yield of over 5%. Um, I like Philip Morris. P.O. and M.O. Or, excuse me, um, PM, PM and MO. Do your homework, do your own research. Look at those yields. How about ABV, ABBV? That stock has been destroyed, trading over a 6% yield. These are names on our whiteboard, names to do research on. What do we do? We get on conference calls, we listen to the particularly the analyst Q&A. You get a lot of information from that. You guys can do that on your own. Go to the website, go to the Investor Center, find the latest webcast. You can fast forward through all the prepared remarks and get to analyst questions. And you'll learn like immediately. You'll be plugged into what the street cares about. I'm handing you my playbook. It's not hard to do this, guys. It just takes work. 
the pipelines are paying a 9% yield. 9% because the price of energy collapsed because there's, you know, a, a economic calamity because Trump and China are, 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 you know, in the midst of a trade war. All that does is bring these assets down to a place where they're paying such a high yield that whenever, whenever we get a resolution with the trade war, these stocks are going to go through the roof and you're going to have locked in a 9% yield. I mean, as long as they're not going to go out of business, if we have to wait a quarter or two for the capital appreciation and we collect a 9% yield in a world where there's negative interest rates and a bank, a Danish bank is paying people to borrow money, then I'm going to collect that yield all day long. How about the REITs, real estate investment trusts? I love them. There's some great REITs in there. I just tweeted out a story about Kimco Realty, KMI. Go check it out. Follow my Twitter feed, at Brett Rosenthal. You'll see a tweet there about Twitter and, 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 and KIM. It's an Investor's Business Daily article from today. It's worth reading. Two of my favorite REITs are REITs that focus on medical properties. Medical properties. That's pretty recession-proof. These things are yielding anywhere from 6 to 7%, sometimes higher than that. But you don't even have to stretch that high. Anything to me over a 5% yield creates a great passive income opportunity if it's a solid company. And when you get this weakness in the market and they wreck these type of names, it just falls right into a basket. Your homework's been done. You get a risk on buy signal. First thing you do is add to that part of your portfolio. Don't forget IBM. IBM's top of the leaderboard. I think that company's turning themselves around. They got a yield over 5%. Okay? So, I hope that's been helpful for you today. That's what's on the top of our whiteboard. Um, I will let you know if our risk on changes. Again, anybody who's a subscriber to the free Armor Report, just go to our website, sign up for it. If we're risk on across the board, I'm going to send out a report immediately that night so you all know what we're doing the next morning. And on Wednesday and Friday, 1130 to noon, I'll share with you the information right here on this show. If you've liked this, please like it. It really helps me with the YouTube and uh, Google search buttons and all that kind of stuff. So help me out. Okay, I'm trying to build my subscribers and I appreciate all the work you guys have done up until this point. I mean, more than doubled subscribers in a month. I really appreciate that. So like those buttons for me. Comment if you have a question. I'll try to cover it in the next call. All right, certainly subscribe to the Armor Report and I'll talk to you guys again on Wednesday at 1130. Take care.